Hi there. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And today we're going to be talking about I was scared of losing them. Yeah. Well, it's a normal fear to worry about losing a partner. And the more that you have attachment issues and insecurities, the more likely you're going to worry that your partner is going to leave you or maybe that uh, you're not good enough for them, you don't have good self-esteem or self-worth. And ironically, I've been saying this for a long time, the very thing we're afraid of, we often cause to happen. Mm -hmm. It's very sad because, you know, we care about somebody so much that we do unhealthy behaviors that make them maybe feel trapped or suffocated and then they feel like, I can't take this anymore. Mm -hmm. When maybe, had you not been afraid of that, they wouldn't have left you. Right. And we see this in romantic dynamics, but also in parent-child dynamics too. Mm -hmm. You know, when a parent has so many strict rules and they say, I'm doing this because I love you. That's what it feels like sometimes in a relationship too. Okay, this doesn't feel like love though. This feels like I'm trapped. This feels like I can't do anything. Yep. So we got a good email coaching today. And they said, hey, Coach Greg. <laughs> Coach Greg. <laughs> I used to work with a lot of Spanish families uh, in Kissimmee years ago, and a lot of them would call me Greg. Greg. I see. Uh, yeah. And Especially like the grandparents. It was Greg. I Greg. I didn't, I didn't care. It doesn't bother me. <laughs> and for those of you who are not from Florida, Kissimmee is Florida's Puerto Rico. Yeah, so. there's a lot of Spanish people mm -hmm. there. Probably like 80% of my clients yeah. were Spanish or Puerto Rican. And yeah. so, uh, Greg, they would say, Greg. <laughs> and the kids would always get mad. It's Craig. Really? It's Craig. They'd it's always Craig, dad. Yeah, they would always defend. <laughs> it's Craig, mom. He's been working with us for three years. It's Craig. <laughs> it didn't bother me. That's funny. We were laughing earlier because sometimes people have called my last name Ramirez <laughs> instead of Rivera. They're like, ah, some Spanish uh, sounding name. <laughs> Whatever. Doesn't it doesn't even bother me, but it's funny. And <laughs> right, I, Greg. and you got a kick out of it. So I did. <laughs> All right. Hey Coach Greg. <laughs> Thank you for all that you do for people like me. My name is Oscar. Not guess what? I changed his name. How do you like it, Oscar? <laughs> Cause Oscar's not his name. <laughs> but now you're Oscar, so how do you like it, buddy? <laughs> I'm twenty eight years old. And I dated a woman named Leticia. Yes, it's a French name. Yes, Victoria Leticia. chose this name. Leticia. Leticia. Mm -hmm. uh, who's in her early 30s. And we started dating in August of 2022. The relationship ended in January. The relationship was wonderful in the beginning. And we fell in love pretty quickly. She has two kids. A son and a daughter, eight and three. And I was used to living alone for a long time, but she ended up staying at my house all the time and it was really different from me. Mm. Well, that's interesting because you would think that they'd spend a lot of time at her place since she has kids. Right. But, you know, you're uprooting your kids to go to somebody new's house. It's kind of odd, right? Mm hmm. And one of the first questions that pops into my mind when I hear that somebody has kids is, what's the custody agreement? Yeah. I always think about the co-parent. How much are they in the kid's life? When did that relationship end? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got to get the info there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Often has a really big impact on the relationship. Yep. So it's hard to get used to that, but I wanted to because it felt really great to have a family. Mm -hmm. I grew very close to her kids and fell in love with them as well. But one of the problems is I was scared of losing her. Mm. It got me that I ended up having bad dreams about it. It sounds like Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. He starts having dreams of losing his wife. Wow. <laughs> and that's why he turns to the dark side. Because mm. he's afraid of losing her. Wow, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's a real attachment trauma going on with Darth Vader. <laughs> I'm serious. You should do a whole uh, dissection of that I movie could. one time. I could. <laughs> Believe me. I did it with Margaret and we you talked did? about it. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. We even think that he might have dissociated and had multiple personalities. <laughs> yeah. I like this theory. Yeah. No. 
Yeah, we'll have to talk about it later. It's going to be your most watched video. <laughs> um, and the other is jealous because the son's dad is in the picture. And Leticia, how are we saying this girl's name? Leticia. Leticia. I'm never going to get it right. That's all right. <laughs> Leticia. We made up the name, so <laughs> it's the last time I let you pick the name. <laughs> Leticia had to talk to him a good bit. And it scared me that she still has feelings for him. Mm. Well, you know, when you do have kids with somebody, it happens. Mm -hmm. Especially if, you know, maybe the father left her as opposed to if she had left him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So maybe, maybe she did still have feelings for the dad. It's a possibility. And what's interesting in these situations is you really do have to think about the benefit of the kids. Sometimes we get caught up into our own... Uh, emotional needs and our own fears and worries and then we end up causing problems that really aren't there yeah exactly fear makes us do a lot of unhealthy things mm -hmm. and it destroys a lot of relationships yeah and you know a lot of childhoods for children fear leads to anger anger leads to hate hate leads to suffering that's Yoda <laughs> is it really yeah oh. <laughs> The attachment time was real. <laughs> because she told me that he was her first love mm. and guys would hit her up on social media when she got a job, I won't say where, uh, oh, basically at a place where cars are being worked on. And so these guys started adding her on Facebook and mm. it scared me. Well, you could see why that would make him uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I mean... I don't think she would have liked it if he was adding a bunch of girls. Yeah. You know? So you have to consider those things. Mm -hmm. It got to the point where I would shut down when her phone would go off because she wouldn't tell me who it was. So that's suspicious. You know, yeah. is she hiding it? I mean, what is she doing? She's giving all these guys her Facebook info and then messaging them. I mean, like, that's not comfortable. Right, but we're also only hearing one part of the story. I'm mm -hmm. imagining from her side, maybe he was asking her and he would tell her or she would tell him in the beginning. But after some time, he's like, who is it? And she's like, oh, God, again, yeah. you know, I've already told you 10 times it's my son's dad or, you know, it's the daycare worker or whatever it is. So, yeah. you know, it. Could be a couple things there. You, you know, you would just want to make sure that uh, she's shutting down any inappropriate behavior from these right, other guys. Right. You know, and and you know, you got to do some kind of soothing mm -hmm. for your partner to make them feel like you're really in it and that you're not interested in other people. I mean, it could be too much. Right. But you know, at the same time, if you have a partner that's giving out their information on social media. Maybe they're maybe she's showing some interest to these guys that they're getting the idea that they could message her or that she's interested. It's a possibility, but it could also be an alternative to let's say a phone number. You know, let's yeah. say they're like, "What's your what's your phone number?" She's mm -hmm. like, "Okay, you know, I have a partner. I'm not really interested in something romantic, but if he'd like to start a friendship or whatever it is, here's my Facebook." Yeah. Not saying that that's the case. We don't know. Yeah, Just throwing but, out some possibilities. But you certainly want to, like, consider both sides of it. Yeah. She got mad at me, and she told me she wanted to start over. Okay. What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a clean slate message. When Remember how Margaret would get so mad about yeah. the clean slate message? What is that? That's not even a... <laughs> There's no such thing. Yeah. You can't just magically start a relationship over. Mm -hmm. You can't just magically send a clean slate message and make somebody forget everything you've done. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Unfortunately, we don't have those men in black powers where you can just <laughs> cause people to forget everything. He says, so I started working on myself, listening to preaching and trusting God and her and knowing that it would be okay if something happens. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to... Look for ways to soothe himself mm -hmm. there, which is good. Yeah. I tried to be more understanding and helping and helping her family by getting them wood so they would have heat. What are they, living in a log cabin? <laughs> I they? knew you were going to say something about that. <laughs> I mean, you got to admit, that's an odd thing to hear. We don't, that maybe, I mean, get wood for the family maybe and have Maybe they heat? live in a cold state, Craig. Not everybody is from Florida, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Uh, maybe he's in Norway. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> Oh, just an odd thing to hear. You're like I, a fire. What is that? <laughs> I'm a helping. Heater? I'm <laughs> helping them get wood for their log cabin. I mean, I don't know. It's just funny to me. Uh, did it more than a couple of times, and when her phone went off, I would just pray in my head and let go of that fear. All right. So it sounds like he was trying to be helpful, mm -hmm. and it. Even though he was trying and making an effort for her family and her kids, he kept seeing these messages. He was trying to soothe himself, calm himself down, but it was not helping too much. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that he also brought up, you know, his faith in this yeah. because faith can be a huge support, just like the rest of your support system. You know, it seemed like he found a way to make a connection, make reassurances with himself, and prayer seemed to be that thing. So yeah. I'm glad that he's trying you know the effort is there mm -hmm. yeah that's good um on christmas she took her son and dropped him off at his dad's and i got out of the truck and said hello to meet him i was really nice but i was shy and didn't ask her if it was okay okay so was he trying to mark his territory here by going to meet this guy or was he trying to um genuinely meet the dad um it's an uncomfortable situation i could tell you with the yeah. applebee's girl i don't even think i met the daughter's father mm. uh, who we called flip flart <laughs> 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 and the reason we called him that is one time I, I was telling my brother his name many years ago and that's what he heard me say on the <laughs> phone he's like what's his name flip flart <laughs> so we just stuck so you got a new, another new piece to the story there wow. the daughter's name was uh, flip flart or the father's name was flip flart <laughs> is that how you hello flip flart my name is Greg <laughs> my name is Greg <laughs> uh, yeah. but it is an uncomfortable mm -hmm. situation and so, I don't know. It, it sounds like maybe he should have discussed it with her first. That's what I was thinking. Ideally, that would have been the best situation to say, hey, you know, would it be okay if I met this person? I would understand why it would be important for him mm -hmm. if he does plan on being a part of her children's lives. You know, I, the best situation for the children is when the parents can communicate, when they can get along, when there's not this animosity and resentment between parents and partners and yeah. parents' partners. So, you know, we really have to think about the kids first, ideally. You yes. know that not all personalities mesh really well. So, In this situation, though, it may have been coming across like he did it because he was like trying to mark territory. Mm, like, I'm you know, the new like, guy I'm here. the guy. I'm the man. Yeah. You better, you know, understand I'm with her now. You There's know what I mean? There's a new sheriff in town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Partner. <laughs> Partner flip flirt. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to show that I'm trying to do better, but she got mad and said I did it because I was jealous. Mm. So at that point, because he had done so much insecure behavior, mm. she just assumed it was another act of jealousy or insecurity, probably. Right, right. And if that is true, I'm wondering if that was a part that he hid from her. Like maybe there was a, a tiny part inside of him that was like, I, I am curious about their father. You know, mm. if, if I do plan on being a part of their life, and he's going to be present, you know, it, it would be most amicable for us to meet. Or I wonder if there was just one speck inside of him that had good intentions with, with him. Yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, but it could either, it could go either way, right? Yeah, you know? true. It seems like that jealousy and fear of losing her was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I told her that I was sorry and I should have talked to her about it. But she didn't listen to me and was mad at me for weeks about it. See, now that kind of makes me feel like maybe she set, still had feelings for the mm -hmm. father, you know? And that's why she didn't want to upset the, the father mm -hmm. with bringing a new guy around. But, you know, who knows? There could have been something going on with her that... It's a possibility. Mm -hmm. I, I will say, as a woman, and this is not to say that all women feel this way, however... Just hearing this new guy introduce him, if it is like a mark your territory thing, that feels very icky yeah. for me personally and maybe for some other women. Sure. You know, it's that idea that there's going to be this power struggle between these men to like win this 
property or this prize. It, it's not a good feeling for me. I don't know if that's true for other women. Sure. No, I, I could see why people wouldn't like it. Yeah. So I, I could see why she would get angry too. You know, why did you think you had to overstep maybe a boundary that was hers or, you know, stand your ground when there's nothing to fight over here? Yeah, you know? because the kid is little mm -hmm. and she's going to have to deal with the dad for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And this guy, he might not be around, he may not be around now, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. And then she's got years and years of dealing with this guy who's now angry at her mm -hmm. and lashing out at her and making her life difficult. Yeah. Because, you know, who knows what that guy's like. Mm -hmm. And ultimately she knows him a lot better than her new boyfriend does. So maybe she had some sort of plan to let this, the, the co-parent know, or maybe she had already let him know. You know, I think some conversation would have been helpful before this. And I could see after the fact, though, you're kind of managing, oh, shoot, I pissed her off. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I do now? Yeah. When I texted her, she didn't text back. So I backed off for a week or so until she would text me back, but she didn't. Mm -hmm. So I texted her after a week and she was still mad at me and was mad because I didn't text her. Oh no. He can't win. Oh my god. <laughs> I texted you, you didn't text back, and now you're mad at me because I texted you but I didn't text you? You can't win. Yeah. Oh man, that's brutal. So anything I did wasn't working. And she broke up with me saying that I wasn't helping her with money, money wise. Hmm. And now they'd only been dating for what, four or five months? Mm hmm. That's a big leap to take to be helping financially. Right. And he was helping with the firewood. Mm -hmm. I don't know where they're living. <laughs> we still don't know. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he was helping. Mm -hmm. So how much did she expect him to do? Uh, that seems a little unreasonable from her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, know? I mean, I could see why she would be overwhelmed with her children. I think any single parent... You know, ideally is hoping for a partner who can be that support. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you are starting a relationship, you can't have all these expectations onto one person. I think it's unfair. Yeah. Before you really get to know the person and allow that person the informed consent necessary to commit to something long term, to commit to really being a part of the children's lives and really being a family. Yeah, that takes time. Mm -hmm. He says, but I did. Yes, she helped when times I couldn't, but I do construction and it snowed and rained a lot during the holidays. I didn't have much money, but I did get them Christmas presents. So he was trying. Mm -hmm. He just I mean, if work wasn't allowing him to work and he couldn't make money, yeah. you know, he was limited what he could do. And it seems kind of like she wasn't being understanding of that. Mm -hmm. She said that I didn't help when I know she was struggling, but I was struggling too. I didn't have a vehicle and not working much didn't help either. But if I did have the money, I helped. See, so it sounds like he cared. Yeah. And I'll also say this is also the benefit of an ideal situation where you can get along with co-parents because everybody can be a resource here for the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if there was an amicable relationship between him and the kid's dad, there would be more resources, more opportunity to help these kids out, mm -hmm. to support the family together. You know, I, I can see maybe his jealousy is saying, I don't want this guy in the picture. I wish he was gone. I wish mm -hmm. he wasn't there. But realistically, you know, having that extra support is, is for the kid's benefit. Yeah, he did mention earlier that he was afraid she might have feelings for him. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think she said that because she was angry, because a lot of what she said didn't make sense. But I want to be better. I want to control my emotions and not have attachment issues, because I do love them, and it's hard to change myself, and it feels like God brought me to you so I can be the man that I want to be with your help. I've done no contact for over three weeks now since the breakup. My question is, is there any chance she will come back? And I want to do the workbooks and have longer, better relationship with her or with someone else, but I want to be with them. I want to be in that family and marry her. And okay, and marry her. Mm -hmm. All right, so, um, you know, I've got some concerns about her. Um, 
I just wonder if she's taking advantage of this guy um, and has unreasonable expectations from somebody that's in a brand new relationship. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, he's saying he's helping. I believe him. He's saying he's helped with various things. And she's having these expectations like they're his children. Mm -hmm. Now, ultimately, if you're going to be with somebody in the long run that has kids, yeah, you kind of have to step up in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. But this is a really new relationship. What was it, like four or five months or yeah. something like that? And she's getting angry at him, and it just didn't seem very fair. Mm -hmm. It makes me think it, maybe she did have feelings for the ex or was hoping that he would come back around again because it would lighten her load. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not easy to be a single mom with two kids. Right. Um, and I'm guessing there's two different dads here uh, because there's two kids and... She said he kept only saying the son, the oh, father of the son. Gotcha. So um, I don't know what's going on with the other dad if he's not involved too. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think he's got to take a step back and also make sure that, you know, she's not trying to take advantage and just use him for money. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, he's working on his insecurities. He knows he's part of the issue here. But how much of it was him how much of it was her mm. it's hard to say yeah and I'm, I'm also curious about that anger after that one moment you know why why was that the straw that broke the camel's back here why wasn't there conversations afterwards about what really was happening it seems like there was a disconnect communication wise after mm -hmm. that to where he dug further into okay you know, why are you so angry? This was a genuine attempt. And she dug further into, whoa, you're overwhelming me with your jealousy. I just can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, part of me wonders, was she just looking for the best option to help her with her kids? I mean, if she was, who could blame her? <laughs> I, well, yeah, I know, but it is, you know, selfish. I mean, in a way, right? Like, he is trying. And he was making effort to help, mm -hmm. but it's like, it makes me wonder, was she entertaining all these guys on Facebook that she was meeting at that uh, place that they were at and looking for which guy is going to help her the most financially? It's like the Maslow hierarchy of needs where she's at this basic level of I'm in survival mode mm -hmm. and I need a guy that will help me survive. It's a possibility. You know? Mm -hmm. So, you know... I just want to make sure, like, that if he gets back with her, it's not just because she's looking for the guy who's going to provide the most. Mm -hmm. Because maybe he doesn't have a, a job that's stable enough to help. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I could see why it would be a little bit different in her situation having kids. Because you're not only thinking about your future, but you're thinking about your kid's future. Yeah. You know, are my kids going to be okay if I decide to choose this partner? That's true. So, you know, I, I could see it from her perspective, too. I think money was just one of many reasons. Mm -hmm. I think money probably was the easiest thing to pin it on mm -hmm. and the thing that you can um, explain without having to go too deep into emotions. You know, you just didn't provide enough, period. Instead of saying, I was overwhelmed. I was feeling stressed. I didn't know how to handle it. I have a hard time having tough conversations. Mm -hmm. When I get angry, I shut down. You know, all of those things that were clearly happening here were not stated. So I, I think the situation is really complex. Um, and I can assure you that in both of their lives individually, there's going to be issues that come up that they have to learn how to, how to talk about to get through. You know, if they did decide to, to intentionally have a life together, him just greeting the kid's father wasn't going to be the biggest issue. Yeah. You know, imagine when the kids grow up and are going to college, who's going to pay for college? Imagine birthday parties, holidays, all of these things that happen when you have a kid with somebody. They're going to pop up and you mm -hmm. have to learn how to manage that or else the relationship dissolves. Yeah, I think um, if she reaches out, you have to be very careful going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, you want to look to see, I think, how sincere and genuine she is about wanting you as opposed to just wanting a guy with a paycheck helping her mm. because you don't want to feel like you're just being used, yeah. you know, and then some guy comes along with more money and she leaves you for another guy. I mean, I'm not saying she would, but it's mm. possible, mm -hmm. you know, just want to make sure that it's for the right reasons. And, you know, if you get your insecurities under control 
and your jealousy under control, I think it would give you a more uh, accurate assessment of what the relationship would be like, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And you also have to remember when you are dating somebody who does have children, where there is a co-parent involved, you are signing up for all of that. So just really be aware of, of what you're getting yourself into. A lot of love. Mm. Obviously, you did have a lot of care for the children. I can see that this breakup is not just about her, but also about the kids, you know, that bond you had. Yeah. So there's a lot of love, but there's also a lot of challenges that you have to have a lot of skill to be able to manage. Yep. So leave her be for now mm -hmm. and, you know, try and take it slow and uh, have discussions about expectations and what she thinks uh, is uh, her expectations for you on what you're going to do to help her with her kids. Mm -hmm. And if you think they're reasonable, because you also just don't want to be taken advantage of either. So tough situation. But hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. And of course, if you want to get our help personally, you can do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Coach Victoria is also available for Skype coaching. If you'd like to chat, I'm here. Just click on her name on the top of the website to schedule with her. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. And I'm Coach Victoria. And we will talk with you soon.